morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Maybe some of us just overslept. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, gentlemen, if you'll take off your hats, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, loving God, what an honor and a pleasure it is to come to your house to praise you, Lord. Amen. We are just so thankful for all the blessings that you give us. Father, we just ask that you send your spirit to fill our hearts to overflowing, that we will feel what we felt the first day that we saw your face. Amen. What a joy. What an experience. <clears throat> Father, we ask that you lift up our voices, that the noise that we make will be pleasing to you, that might touch the hearts of someone that really needs to know you, Lord, because that's what we need to do, is we need to bring people to the Lord, to you, Father. Father, once again, we give you the praise and the glory, and we just thank you so, so very much for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> When I get to glory, I'm going to sing, sing, sing. I'm going to let the hallelujahs ring. I'm going to praise my blessed Savior's name. When I get to glory, I'm going to sing, sing, sing. In this world of sorrow, I've seen trouble and woe. When I get to glory, I'll see no more. For I know my prayers have not been in vain. When I get to glory, I'm going to sing, sing, sing. Sometimes I get so weary inside. Then I recall how my Jesus died. Up there I know there'll be no pain. When I get to glory, I'm going to sing, sing, sing. When I get to glory, I'm going to sing, sing, sing. I'm going to let the hallelujahs ring. I'm going to praise my blessed Savior's name. When I get to glory, I'm going to sing, sing, sing. Up there, no tears will find my eyes. As I walk along by Jesus' side, I'll be Sing, sing, sing. When I get to glory, I'm gonna sing, sing, sing. I'm gonna let the hallelujahs ring. I'm gonna praise my blessed Savior's name. When I get to glory, I'm gonna sing, sing, sing. Amen, amen. Sing his praises, right? Amen.
it nice to be in his hands? Hey, Amen. Amen. When you've strayed from the fold and there's trouble in your soul, can't you hear the blessed Savior calling you? When your soul is lost in sin and you're at your journey's end, can't you hear the blessed Savior calling you? Calling you, calling you, calling you, calling you. Can't you hear the blessed Savior calling you? He will take you by the hand, lead you to that promised land. Can't you hear the blessed Savior calling you?
my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're kind of scant this morning. We've got some people that are back, and we have people that are out. So as you go along, call those that you know that haven't been here. Reach out to them. Tell them we missed them. Welcome back to those who have been out either ill or visiting. It's so good to see all of you. Welcome to Rockin' Country Church. I forgot my glasses today, so I'm going to be winging it here. Are they readers? Yep. Yes, I'll take them. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, do we have any first-time visitors this morning? If you're a first-time visitor, would you please raise your hand? Everybody home folks today? Yeah. Can we have a visitor? Yeah. Louise, is this a visitor with you? He was here last week. He's been here before? Well, yeah. welcome back then. Yeah. Welcome back. Anyway. All right, good deal. All right, in the welcome bag, there's a little, there's a card that we ask you to fill out and deposit it, deposit it, in the black mailbox in the back. Our, our mailbox is for various and sundry things like welcome cards, membership requests, tithes and offerings. It's a multi-purpose mailbox in the back and it's painted black. And it has a picture of a man on horseback delivering mail sitting right back there where Kathy is. <laughs> All right. So if you've been coming for a while, well, these glasses are weird. <laughs> if you've been coming for a while and you want to make Rock and Country Church your home, then we ask you to fill out a membership form on the back table, put it in that infamous black mailbox, and Brother Woody will get with you, and we will be glad to welcome you into our fellowship. So, moving along, we have Bible study two times a week, Tuesday morning at 10, 10 but not Tuesday. Uh -huh. Okay, so we will not have Tuesday morning Bible study this week. Wednesday, though, we will have our Bible study at... 645. 645. And we're still studying in Revelation. And I tell you what, it's, it's gotten and continues to be very, very interesting. Uh, Y'all need to come and find out what, you're going, what we are going to miss, thank God. Right. <laughs> After we are raptured out. Just so, to let you know, we're fixing to get into the Battle of Armageddon. Yes, indeed. It's Christ good. coming back. It's, it's be getting good. good. All right, so... Monday night, New Year's Eve. We're going to have fellowship here at the church starting at 7 o'clock. Games, what have you, movies. We're going to eat, bring sides that will go along with barbecue sandwiches starting 7 and running until we go home. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a sign-up sheet on the back for your food and maybe games you're going to bring or whatever. So let's all see if we can come and have some sweet time in the Lord and fellowship with one another and bring in, go, take out the old year, it's, and it's been a year, and bring in the new year, and it's going to be a year when we come back. But you know what? God's still in charge. So, um, January the 5th, Saturday, the Lamb Living Adopted Men's Ministry Meeting and Breakfast for the, for the Men. It's going to be at First United Methodist Church in Kemp, 8 o'clock. All the men are invited. That same day at 9.30, the ladies' ministry meeting will be here at the church. So we will be, uh, you know, having our meeting as well as getting ready for our fellowship luncheon, which will be January the 6th, the next day. And our food theme this month will be your favorite dish and sides. And, of course, there is a sign-up sheet on the back for that. We, that table back there is multi-purpose, and it gets a lot of use. So y'all go back there and peruse it and see what you can get into over there. So then uh, 
Also, Sunday afternoon after our fellowship luncheon, the band jam will come. That starts at 2. And then January the 20th, we are in for a treat. Trusting Him will be yeah. in our services. And we love them, love them. So I look forward to that. All right, so here at Rock and Country Church, we do not pass the hat, plate, boot, but as the Lord prompts you and urges you to give, uh, we ask that you uh, put your offerings and tithes in the black mailbox. There are envelopes on the back table for various ministries, tithes, building fund, whatever. Y'all, you know, you take an envelope and put whatever you're giving to on the envelope and, and put it in that black mailbox. Uh, so we are just still looking for assistance. We still need people to make that joyful noise unto the Lord. I don't see any new additions back here. So I'm assuming, y'all know what happens when you assume, that nobody came and tried out or, or uh, practiced with the praise and worship team. So we need some new faces back here. We need more volume. So if the Lord leads you to sing, you know, don't be bashful. I've done it before. They kicked me off, and that's okay. I still love them. <laughs> Remember kicking anybody off? <laughs> really? I'm just. <laughs> must, must have been Holly that did that. I'm just. And I don't well, think she I did. I know I'm getting hot. I'm telling stories here. <laughs> but y'all come and, and you know if you have the time and the Lord is prompting you to do it, then come and sing with the praise and worship team. They practice on Tuesdays yep. and then on Sunday mornings, and it's a little bit of time out of your daily routine, but it is so worth it, and it it is just. <laughs> It touches your heart. So, you know, y'all be in prayer about that. We still need part-time workers in the children's ministry. Uh, there's just so many different things that we can get involved with. And we need to stand up and, and be used as unto the Lord. So y'all just keep all those things in mind. And... Um, Jack still needs people back in the sound booth. He needs, if, if nothing else, we need people to stand in the gap when somebody's missing. So we need volunteers to go back and learn the, the sound and the cameras and, and whatever else I do back there to make our, our noise be good to the world out there. So somebody volunteer. I'm going to volunteer if y'all don't, so y'all do that. <laughs> All right, on the back, we have our prayer request. Yes, ma'am. I just thought of it. I'm sorry. But we're going to have our first ladies' meeting next Saturday, and it will be a planning meeting for the new year. So if you ladies want to get involved, you want to see something different done, please come come to that meeting and speak up, and we'll see if we can get some great fun things going. Amen. Absolutely. And you know, we want to start having ladies events here. Yes. We can't do that until we get our foundation set up here. Exactly. So, And I'm guilty of that as well. I, I let my busy schedule keep me from going sometimes. So I'm going to be there, Lord willing. So, you know, we all need to make an effort to get there so that we can you know, put our ideas together and do the planning that we need. So let's all do that. Okay, so our prayer Could I say class. something? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. <laughs> Friday morning, we're going to undecorate. Oh. Okay. All right. So if anybody would like to come and help us undecorate, about 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, okay. I figure it's going to be 9 o'clock to 1230. At least. Okay. At least. All right, so, so we need. Because we're doing more than just throwing them in a box this year. Right. <laughs> and this can be men and ladies. Right? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So, ladies and men both, 9 o'clock Friday morning, so that we can undecorate the church. That's a good deal. All right. Prayer request. We have a couple of additions. Uh, Polly's um, brother, Freddie White, he is back in the hospital again. He's... Um, He's going down his last journey, probably. So y'all be praying for him, Freddie White. Uh, Rose's nephew passed away, so y'all remember the Jordan family and the loss of their family. And then Deanna's boss's uh, family has suffered a loss in their family, so remember the Peterson family as well. And then all the others that are on our list as well, too. I have one more, please. Yes, sir. Uh, my cousin's Matthew Sanchez passed away. Matthew Sanchez? Okay, so so remember the Sanchez family. That's that's Johnny's uh, family there. All right. So with that thought in mind, gentlemen, would you remove your hats and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for your goodness and your mercy and your everlasting love. 
Thank you for bringing us through 2018. And we look forward to what 2019 has to bring because we know that you're in charge. We ask that you be with all of these prayer requests that have been made known to you and also to those who have uh, not spoken up. But we know there are needs in our church and in our community. And Lord, I ask that you just take care of each and every one of them. We trust you to do that. Be with our military, our first responders, uh, the homeless, the hungry, Lord God, all the people that need it. We just, we trust you to take care of it. I ask that you be with the remainder of the services. May it be a blessing to you. May it be a blessing to each other. And uh, just be with us as we go through the day and the rest of the week and bring us back at the next appointed time. We ask all this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm satisfied with just a cottage below.
talk comes so easy when life's at its best now it's down in the valley of trials and temptations that's when you this morning. It is an awesome day to be in the house of the Lord. It's an awesome day to be with God each and every day. You know, God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He never changes. And so he's a mighty God that we can go to each and every day with anything, with anything we've got. But you're not going to be able to go to him if you don't know him. And we're going to talk about that today. It's, this is a day of recommitment. If you look on our sign out there, it's a new year, new you. New year, new you. I'm not asking you to dedicate any time to the church. I'm not asking you to do any work for the church. I'm not asking you to do anything for this building whatsoever, but I am asking you to do something for you, which is make a commitment to Christ that you're going to get to know him more and more this year. If you do that, if you do that, everything else will be taken care of because the same God is on the mountains, the same God that's in the valley and he'll make it right if you know who he is, but you don't know who he is. Don't count on him. Don't call it. You know, one of the scriptures we read not too long ago, Jesus in the book of Revelation, Jesus uh, was saying, don't call on me. If you don't believe in me, don't call on me. All right. But if you do, then you call on me anytime at all. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's go ahead. Uh, well, we got one asleep. <laughs> well, no, we got two asleep. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I can stay here. I think you can stay in here. <laughs> Cause, cause time. The baby. You guys, though, just for the kids. The babies are asleep. Now, that's not y'all, okay? <laughs> Oh, well, we got, uh, we got uh, the big guy back there. Is he going to stay in here? Yeah, I kind of figured he would. Yeah. All right. Close the sleep. <laughs> <laughs> they're all Jason, I mean uh, Maxie's asleep too so they're all gone <laughs> that's right that's right well let's go to the Lord and pray up our service today and then we'll get started Heavenly Father we thank you Lord that we can come into your house and worship you and praise you and glorify you with our lives and that's what it's all about Lord it's all about you it's not about us it's not about us at all but if we realize that we will just come to you and, and humble ourselves and receive your love and receive your gifts and your your uh, strength and your power that we can do all things through Christ who is our strength. Lord, I thank you for being a part of my life. I thank you for letting me be a part of yours, your kingdom. Use me today, Lord, to teach your word as you want taught, not my words, but yours, Lord. Let it come across to the point to where it can be received and where it can be retained and where it can manifest in the hearts, souls, minds, and spirits of those who hear your word today and they will be a blessing to the world because of you. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for being our Lord. We thank you for being our King of Kings. We thank you for being our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I know I had them here somewhere. <laughs> Donna left her or lost her glasses or left them or whatever. And well, I didn't have mine either. I thought, and that would not be good because I can't use those that she has. I look good in them, though. <laughs> no, it doesn't help me at all. It sure doesn't. <laughs> 
You know that each year, each year people, this time of year, you know, we're going into the New Year's, each year uh, people make resolutions. You know, well, I'm going to make a New Year's resolution. I'm going to promise I'm going to lose weight. I promise I'm going to do this. I promise I'm going to do that. On and on and on and on and on. Do you realize that statistics say... Do you realize that statistics... Do you realize that statistics say only 8%, 8% of the New Year's resolutions made are kept? Now, we think about that. Oh, well, that's not very many. But think about this. 92% are not kept. 92% are not kept. Now, that's a big figure. So why in the world do we waste our time doing it? Well, we do it because we think we're going to keep those resolutions. We think we're going to do what we say we're going to do. See how, see how weak we are? Now, I'm not talking about anybody in specific. I'm just simply saying that we try to do this and we try to do that. And God is our strength. Christ is our strength. Philippians 4.13. We need him to, to even keep the resolutions that we make. Well, I'm going to ask you this year to try to keep one resolution and try to be in that 8% bracket, which is to come to know Christ, to come to know Christ. Because if you don't know who Christ is, Jesus says, you can't do anything without me. Wow, that's a pretty powerful statement. Now, of course, he's talking about you can't do anything for his kingdom. And that's the reason that you were put on this earth. But you can't do anything for his kingdom without him. So we need him in our lives. But how do you get to know him? The commitment that I would like for you to make is simply to get to know him as your best friend. I think they call it BF, is it BFF or BBF? BFF. BFF. Best, best friend forever. Yes. Okay. Jesus is my best friend forever. I have come to the point in my life to where I realize I need a good friend, one that I can depend on, one that is always there. And Jesus is always there, irregardless of me. See, and that's the difference. My friend doesn't care where I'm at. We were talking about this today uh, with Jordan. We were talking about with him earlier today that uh, he had he had a friend that uh, that needs a friend. And Jesus will be that friend irregardless of us. That's a good friend. So how do we get to know our friend? Well, we have to spend time with our friend. OK, we have to spend time with him. I know a friend that I can always call on and he's always right there. I can always count on my friend to lift me up. I can always tell all my secrets to my friend. I can lash out at my friend, but he's still there for me. I can be comforted at any time by my friend. And I can ask any question and get a truthful answer, a truthful answer. Not what I want to hear, but what I need to hear. Even if it's not the one that I want, and when I do it my way and fail, my friend will pick me up, dust me off, and never say, I told you so. My friend will always cheer me on. He will always encourage me to do better. and will always be at my finish line with arms open wide. If you haven't got a friend like this, I'm willing to share my friend with you. My friend is healthy, big and strong, though he's very old, very old. He's been here since the beginning of the beginning. He's been battered, shackled, beaten up, tortured, slapped, spit on, ridiculed, made fun of, cursed, neglected, pushed aside, forgotten, stepped on, stomped on, and simply told he is not wanted. And this by me. Yet when I need him, he's always there. There's a saying, a friend in need is a friend indeed. 
well, that's really me. That's really me. Because I'm always a friend to Christ when I need something. But what about when Christ needs something? You say, oh, well, Christ doesn't need anything. No, he doesn't, but he wants something from each and every one of us. He doesn't need a thing, but he wants everything of value that you have, of true value, which is really only your true friendship and a little bit of time. Just a little bit of time. Do we realize that if we come to church on Sunday, we give Jesus about two hours of our devoted time per week? Two hours. That's not very much time to spend with a friend. I want you to know, my friend, his name is Jesus. I bet you said, well, sure, I knew you were going to say that. I know that's who you were speaking of. But I don't want you to know of who I'm speaking of. I want you to know who I'm speaking of. There's a big difference there. Let's go to John 17. John 17, the Gospel of John. In John 17 is the Lord's Prayer. Now we say, oh, well, that's not the Lord's Prayer. This whole chapter is the prayer of Jesus. John 17, the Gospel of John, chapter 17, is Jesus' prayer. Now we say that that's not the Lord's Prayer because the Lord's Prayer is our Father who art in heaven, how be thy name, etc., etc. You can find it over in the other Gospels. That's actually not the Lord's Prayer. And it's okay if you call it that. That's not a problem. However, if you read those scriptures, Jesus is teaching his disciples. He says, this is how you should pray. He doesn't say this is what you should pray. He said this is how you should pray. So he basically gives us a diagram or an outline as to how we are to pray. But as far as Jesus' pr actual prayer, Jesus prays for himself two times in Scripture. The first time is in the Garden of Gethsemane. The Garden of Gethsemane, whenever he was going to the cross to die for your sins and mine. And he said, Father, please, if there is any way possible, let this cup pass from me. But my, not my will, but your will be done. And what he was simply saying is, is that, Lord, I do not want to be separated from you even for three hours. That is the true hell that I do not want to face. I'll take the slap and the hit and the spit and the ridicule. I'll take all that. I'll take the crown of thorns. I'll take the beatings. That's okay. I can handle that. But I don't want to handle one moment without you in my life. Not one moment. And God had to turn his back on his son for three hours because his son became our sin. And God had to turn his back on sin because sin is not allowed in the presence of a holy God. The second time Jesus prayed for himself was in chapter 17 of the book of John. First, he prayed for himself, starting at verse 1, going through, I think, verse 5 or 6, somewhere in there. Then he prayed for his disciples. Then after that, he prayed for all of those who would believe. And I want to start just simply going over to the very end of his prayer in uh, verse 25. Starting at verse 25. He's, and this is his prayer. Now, this is a prayer. He is praying to the Father for you and me. For the future believers that would come to, to know him as their, sa as their Savior. It says, Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you. And they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself be in them. You see how much Jesus wants to be your friend? Jesus wants to live in you every day. 
every day. Not just two hours on Sunday and maybe an hour or so on Wednesday night at Bible study. But he wants to be your friend every day and with you every day. But see, we have a tendency to put him on the shelf. We have a tendency to leave him at home. We have a tendency to put him on the coffee table and let dust gather on our Bibles. And people come in and say, oh, you got a family Bible. It's so nice. Why is all the dust on it, though? Oh, you've got a Bible up on the shelf. Have you ever read it? Oh, no, it just looks good up there. Oh, I take it down on Sunday when I go to church. And I open it up then. We give two hours a week to God. Two hours a week to Christ. Two hours a week to the Holy Spirit. Now, certainly, I'm not saying that everybody does that, but a lot of people do. The whole point is, is that we seem to leave Jesus out of our lives until we need him. Till that friend in need becomes a friend indeed. Then we call on Christ. Instead of saying, Lord, I might need something today. So will you be with me today to take care of that? Start your day off with him instead of calling on him when you get in a bind. We fail to do that. But Jesus prays. He says, I want them to know me, Father. And I will live with them and be with them. As I stated a little bit ago, how do we get to know someone? You spend time with them. Now we know that we don't have Jesus in the physical each and every day. We don't have him right here as far as the physical body of Jesus. Or do we? Or do we have him? Actually, we do. If we, if we are here, uh, if, if he were here, wouldn't you want to sit next to him? If Jesus was sitting right here next to Terry, wouldn't you kind of say, Terry, will you move over a little bit? <laughs> if Jesus came up here to pray, now, please understand, and I know you know this, none of us standing up here are anywhere close to being, being Christ. We're working on being Christ-like, just like everybody else. But if Jesus was up here, wouldn't you come to him and pray? Wouldn't you come to him for him to pray for you? What if Jesus came up here to be prayed for? Twice in scripture he prayed for himself. Would you not come and gather around him to support him and pray for him? Sure we would. Sure we would. We want a relationship with Christ. But we don't have him in the physical being. But we do have him. We do have him. Let's look at the guidance of, the, of living for Christ over in Ephesians 4. Go to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, verse 17. Ephesians 4, verse 17. Verse 17. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. In the futility of their thinking. In other words, we have a bad mindset or a wrong mindset or a shortfall of how we think about God. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of ignorance. Ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Now, please understand, ignorance is not meaning like anyone is stupid or anyone is, is uh, uh, you know, can't learn or anything like that. Ignorance simply means a lack of knowledge means you don't have the knowledge to do what you need to do. You don't have the knowledge to know what you need to know. That's what ignorance is. 
So we don't want to look at being ignorant as being something that is really bad other than the fact that we just need, there's something out there that we need to know. So that we're not ignorant of the facts. So how do we do that? You certainly can use, use it uh, or reason with it or even explain scriptures or even share scriptures if you don't know what the scriptures are. If you don't know who Jesus is, really know who Jesus is, how are you going to share him? Uh, well, you know, I, I go to church on Sunday and the pastor talks about this, the, you know, Jesus, you know, he's a savior and, uh, you know, he, he died and he uh, rose again and, uh, you know, something like, you know, he's in heaven now and we'll be in heaven someday. I mean, that might be good for a three year old. But even a three year old usually understands it better than some Christians do. Why? Because we just use what is on the surface, what we think we know. Because we haven't spent time with our friend. We haven't spent time with our friend. And you can't have that friend unless you spend time with it. Verse 19. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity that, and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you've learned. Now, how do you learn something? You have to study it, right? You have to have it with you. You have to spend time to learn. If you went through school, and I'm sure all of us did that are here, did you, did you graduate uh, the elementary school and junior high or however it was? Did you, did you finish all those grades just by not ever learning anything? Well, certainly not. You learned to read and write and arithmetic and all that stuff. They even say it that anymore, the three R's. I think it's now it's you learn uh, computer science and uh, you know, whatever. But uh, if you don't learn something, you don't know it, right? That's being ignorant of the fact. So how can you say, I know Christ, if you don't spend time with him or you spend two hours a week with him? In all actuality, you only spend about an hour with him because the rest of the time is praise and worship and announcements. You know, Donna takes for about two or three hours just an announcement. No, I'm, te I'm teasing now, okay? But my point is, is simply this. As far as our scripture learning and all, it's only about an hour. Sometimes less, sometimes more. So think about it. You've only spent an hour with God once a week. One hour. Does he not deserve more than that? Yes he, does. yes, he does. Yes, he does. You were taught, you were taught, verse 22, with regard to your former way of life to put off the old self, which is being corrupted by the deceitful desires. To be made new in your attitude of your minds. New in your attitude and your minds. That means where does it start? It starts with getting rid of your stinking thinking and trying to get to know Christ more by getting into his word. And to put on a new self, a new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Righteousness and holiness. Ooh, I, I'm not righteous. I'm not holy. No, but you're being made that way. The more you know Christ, the closer you come to know Christ, the more he knows you, the more you have that relationship with him, the more holy you, you are to God. Why? Because you learn how to be like Christ. Well, I don't know if I can ever be like Christ. Then don't call yourself a Christian. Because the word Christian means to be Christ-like. That's what it means. It means to be Christ-like. So either you're going to try to achieve to be Christ-like like we should, or you might as well not even come to church. You might as well not even read your Bible. Leave it on a shelf. Leave it. Let it collect dust. You're not to stay idle. Oh, I got my salvation, got my ticket punched. I'm good to go. I'm done. That's not why you're here. You and I are here to build God's kingdom. How do you build God's kingdom? You be Christ-like so that other people will see what Christ has done for you. Not how great you are, but probably how bad you've been and what Christ has done. 
especially, especially, verse 22, you were taught with regard to a, your former way of life to put off the old self, which has been corrupted by the, the, uh, its de deceitful desires, to be made new in your attitude of your minds and to put on a new self created to be like God. Wow, that's a pretty tall order, right? It's a pretty tall order. However, God doesn't expect you to be him. God doesn't even expect you to be Jesus. But he does expect you to work on being Christ-like. Be Christ-like to grow on a continual basis. On a continual basis to be more and more made in the image of his son. That is God's will for your life. That's God's will for your life. To be made more and more in the image of his son. To be Christ-like. How simple is that? See, now you have the knowledge, so you have no excuse. You have no excuse whatsoever. Because you've been given the word of God. Therefore, verse 25, Therefore, each of us must put off falsehood in speaking and speak truthfully to our neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. In other words, get over it. All right, whatever it is, just get over it. And do not let the devil have a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must not steal, must, but must work uh, doing something useful with their hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Now, you could say, oh, well, I don't steal. I don't go out and rob a bank. I don't go to the curb store and hold them up. I don't go to the gas station and stick them up and take all their money. Okay, we're missing the point of stealing here. We're missing the point of stealing. What he's saying is, you're stealing God's time by not spending time with God. By not doing what God has called you to do. He said you must work with your hands to build his kingdom is what he's talking about. And if you're not doing that, then you are stealing God's favor and God's blessing. Why? Because he gives you the breath of life each and every day. He is blessing you with life. He's blessing you with everything that you have. Everything comes from Him. It does not belong to you. You're just using it. Everything comes from Him. And if you're not using it for His kingdom, for His glory, you're stealing from Him. That's what that scripture is trying to say. Are you a thief? Boy, I know I have been. I have been. When I said back a minute ago, all those different things that, uh, that I have done to Christ, at some point in time, in some way, shape, form, or fashion, this is from my heart when I was talking with God this morning. This is, this is what I saw me in the mirror. When I looked in the mirror, I saw the man who said, Jesus, I don't need you. Have I stole from God? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. Do I want to give back? I can never repay. Never repay him. But he doesn't want it paid in full. Why? Because he's already paid it in full. All he wants is just your love, just your friendship, just some time with you. Just some time with you. That's what he's after. He's not after everything you've got. He doesn't want you to write a check and put all your money into a, a church. And please, 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 especially this time of year, you're going to have a lot of ministries, a lot of ministries on TV and on the air saying, give, 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 give. We're at our end of our line. This is the end, last time, chance you can do it. We need money. Our, our ministry's not paid for yet. You know what? No ministry's paid for. Okay. And do not, please, please, people, people, do not ever put your tithe on a credit card or your offering on a credit card. That means you're going in debt. You're not using your money. You're using somebody else's money. Do not ever do that. And yet you'll have ministries on TV and ministries on uh, radio and all this. Just put it on a credit card. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's not your money. You're not giving out of your heart. You're not even giving out of your means. And over in the scriptures, it says that you are to give out of your means. That means what you have, not what you don't have. And if you put it on a credit card, you don't have it. You don't have it. So please don't ever do that. Verse uh, 
Where are we at? 29? Verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. See that? Remember when we were talking about a minute ago? A friend in need is a friend indeed. You'll have people come to you. Yes, you're not to turn everything you have over to them. You're not to let them take advantage of you. You're not to let, to let them take from you what you, what you need. But you are to try to fill their needs if you can, simply by speaking a good word. That's what the scripture says here. It says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Oh, well, you ought not be in the shape that you're in. Oh, well, you ought not to be on welfare. Oh, well, you ought not to be this. You ought not to be that. Why don't you get off your duff and do something? That's not what he says, though. It says, but only what is helpful in building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So you see, we're to encourage people, just like I said a while ago. My friend encourages me, even when I'm wrong. Even when I said, hey, I don't need you, I can do it my way, and I fail, my friend still is there for me to lift me up. Not put me down, but to lift me up. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for a day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. Verse 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. You see, as many times as I have ridiculed God, many times as I have told Jesus I don't need you, as many times as I've slapped Jesus, spit on Jesus, stomped on Jesus, crucified Jesus again, he still says, I love you and I'm here for you and I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He forgives me. I can never repay that. Chapter 5, verse 1. Follow God's example. Follow God's example. Well, what is God's example? It's His Son, Jesus. That's God's example. His Son, Jesus. Therefore, as dearly loved children... And walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Just like Jesus. Christ-like. That's what he's calling us to do, is to be Christ-like. But if we go back over here and we look at uh, verse 18. Verse 18, Ephesians 4, 18. It says, and they are darkened. In their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Due to the hardening of their hearts. Ignorance, pardon me, excuse me. Ignorance again is not knowing. So how can you share it? How can you live it? How can you believe in it? If you don't know it. Well, I guess, first of all, the question is, is what is it? What is it? It is God's word. It is God's word. Let's go over to John 1, the Gospel of John, verse 1. You all know this scripture. I'm sure you do. I use it all the time because I love it. We actually have it in our foyer out there. John 1. Verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God, with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2. He, He, so the Word is a He, right? He was with God in the beginning. Verse 14. And the Word became flesh and made His dwelling ab among us. So who is the Word? Who is it? It is Jesus. This Word, this Bible that you have, these basic instructions before leaving earth, this whole book, all 66 books, are about one person. And that's Jesus. Everything in this book leads to one person. And that's Jesus. That's what this book is about. 
In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was Jesus. Today is Jesus. In the end, it will be Jesus. We're going to go into uh, Revelations 19, 20, 21, and 22. 22 is the last chapter. And Jesus says in chapter 22, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. This whole book is about Jesus. And if you want to know Jesus, you must be in this book. Bible study is extremely important. Not, oh, well, I don't feel like going to Bible study tonight. That's just, you know, it's, and I'm not trying to make fun of anybody who, because the cold does affect a lot of people. It's too cold. It's too wet. I don't feel good. You know, blah, 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 blah. Okay, do a Bible study at home. There's no excuse. I have told people many a time, I said, you know what? You want to do Bible study? Call me. I'll come to your house. You don't think I will? Try me. Not Wednesday night. Wednesday night I'm here. Okay? For 11 years now, every Wednesday night I've been in Bible study. Unless, of course, we've been out of town, then we usually do Bible study ourselves. Thursday night we had somebody come over that missed Wednesday night. We did a Bible study. She came over to the house. We ate dinner. And it was very good, by the way. <laughs> we ate dinner and we did a Bible study. So actually, we're ahead of you in, in uh, our Bible study because we went a little further. Bible study is important. Okay? If you don't get it from me, we do it on Tuesdays. Barbara does it. Miss Barbara does it on Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock. We do it here Wednesday night at 645. We do it here every Sunday. Oh, we do Bible study Sunday? Yeah, we're doing it right now. This is Bible study. I preach out of the Bible. If you want to call it preaching, I would rather prefer to call it teaching. But everything I use comes from the Bible. It doesn't come from another book. It doesn't come from somebody else's thoughts or, or our ideas. It comes from Jesus. That's where it comes from. My sister called me this morning. Sister Beverly called me this morning at six something. I don't remember what it was. And I was in my office with the Lord. And I'd, I'd started, he had started giving me, and she prayed for me. She encourages me to do what God has called me to do. And I kid you not, you get with the Lord, he'll deliver whatever you need. He'll give it to you. Now, he's not going to just say, here, here's a million bucks. Here, here's this. Here, here's that. He says, but look, this is what you need. A way to learn who I am and a way to learn how to walk through this life in prosperity. In prosperity. Prosperity is not just money. Please understand that. Prosperity is health. Prosperity is finance. Prosperity is a good positive attitude, emotions. Prosperity is love. Prosperity is friendship. How many of you, don't raise your hands or anything, how many of you can say you have a true friend? I said, back over here, I'm going to go back to it. And it's kind of lengthy, but this is what the Lord gave me, so, and you got to sit there, so there you go. All right? I know a friend who will, uh, I can always call on, and he's right there. I, and I wrote this this morning because God gave it to me this morning. I didn't get it off of somewhere else. This is what he gave me this morning. I can always count on my friend to lift me up. I can always tell all of my secrets to my friend. I can lash out at my friend, and he's still there. I can be comforted any time by my friend. I can ask any question and get a truthful answer. A truthful answer that's very important. Even if it's not the one that I want, and when I do it my way and fail, my friend will pick me up, dust me off, and never say, I told you so. My friend will always be there, cheering me on encouraging me to do better and always be at the finish line waiting for me with open arms. Do you have a friend like that? Very few people do. Very few people do. I encourage you to seek Christ out as your friend because that's who Christ is and I'm willing to share him. 
I'm willing to share him. And please take this the right way. But if you're ignorant, if I'm ignorant of who Christ is, then I'm not spending time with him. I should know Christ more than I know my wife, more than I know my kids, more than I know my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles. I should know Christ more than I know anyone else in the entire universe. Do you? I'm working on me. You have to work on you. Let's go over to Romans Romans uh, 11. Now, of course, I've got mine marked, but I'll wait on you. Please go to Romans 11, verse 33. Romans 11, verse 33. Oh, man. All right, verse, uh, Romans 11, verse 33. If you're ignorant of it, you simply don't know Jesus as you think you should know Jesus. And if you don't know him, how in the world is he going to be your friend? How in the world are you going to share him? How in the world are you going to get to know him? Will you go to what we would call the well, right? You go to the well. If you're thirsty for knowledge of knowing who Jesus is, where do you go? You go to the well. Verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge of God. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom of knowledge in God. Wow. So if you want to know anything, guess where you go? You go to God. Jesus is God. We just read that over there a while ago in John 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was, was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is God. You go to Jesus. How unsearchable His judgments and His paths beyond tracing out. In other words, He's got so much information, there's no way you're going to be able to get it all. You cannot get it all. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been His counselor? Who has ever given to God what God should repay them? I've only taken from God. Many times I feel like, how could I ever, ever, ever repay Christ for what he's done for me? All Jesus asks of me is one thing, is to have a relationship with him. To know Jesus is to love Jesus. To know God is to love God. Because once you know him, once you know them, you cannot help but love him. For from him and through him, verse 36, and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, I urge you... Brothers and sisters, this is Paul talking to the church of Rome, but I'm talking to you, all right? I'm talking to you at Rock and Country Church. Brothers and sisters, I urge you to view God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Oh, no, that means I've got to go kill myself for God? No, not at all. The sacrifices are done and paid for. They're already finished. We don't have to do any sacrifices whatsoever. Except, except, sacrifice our own egos, our own desires, our own wants. Sacrifice them and get rid of them and see what God wants us to do. Right. Devote our lives to Him. Well, how do you do that? Guess what? The answer is right here. To offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. You want to worship God? This is how you do it. Do not conform to the patterns of the world, but be transformed. Be transformed. That means you're going from one thing to something totally different and becoming whatever that is totally different. 
Getting rid of the old, bringing in the new. This is a new year. New year, new you. Get rid of the old, bring in the new. Renewing, transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? You get rid of the old junk that's in there that you don't need and you put in some good knowledge. You put in some good wisdom. Where do you get it? Right here in this book. It's all right here in this book. Then, this is what I love. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good and pleasing and perfect will. Wow. You see, you are not going to have a clue as to what God wants in your life. I get this question all the time. Well, I don't know what the will of God is in my life. Well, I don't know what God wants me to do. Well, I don't know what His will is. It's pretty simple. You know His Son. That's where it starts. That's where it starts. That's not where it finishes. That's not the end. It doesn't change next year at the end of the year. It still stays the same. You can never know Jesus 100%. It says back up here in, in chapter 11, verse, verse 33. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths are beyond tracing out. In other words, what it's saying is you can never know all there is to know. Never know. You know, I've read this book several times cover to cover. But I've never finished it. I've never finished it. I've read it cover to cover. Page one to page whatever the last page is in chapter 22 of Revelation. But I've never finished the book. And I never will finish the book. Never. I could read it a thousand times, cover to cover, and never be finished. Because each and every time we studied Revelation 17 and 18 Wednesday night, right here. Whenever we studied it over at our house Thursday night, I got more out of it than I knew whenever I did it Wednesday night. Every day I open this book, I get more and more out of it. I can never finish this book. And this book is Jesus. This book is Christ. This book is our way of life. It should be anyway. Come on. Not the old way, not the way of the world. What did it say right here in, uh, in verse 2? It says, do not conform to the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Jesus, Jesus is the answer. We start by offering our bodies as a living sacrifice. Not a dead sacrifice, but a living sacrifice. That means we are now devoting ourselves to Christ first and foremost. I want to know Christ more than I know my wife. I want to know Christ more than I, and I love my grandkids and I love my wife. I want to know them more than my grandkids. I want to know Christ more than my kids. I want to know Christ more than you. Sorry, but Christ is more important than you. You're very important now. And please don't take that the wrong way. I love you and I want the, the absolute best for you. But Christ is more important. Why? Because I need him. I need him in my life each and every day. I have to have him in my life each and every day. Why? Because if I don't, the world comes in and I start conforming myself to the world. Yeah, it's easy for me to backslide. It's easy for me to do things I should not do. It's very hard to do sometimes the things that I know Christ intends me to do or wants me to do. However, I will do my best to conform to Christ and not this world. It's not easy. It's tough. It's hard. Becoming a Christian is simple. Very, very, very simple. You must truly mean it in your heart, but it's truly simple. Living the Christian life is tough. It's tough. Why? Because you'll have people who are your supposedly friends. You'll have people who, and I'm not saying that any spouses do, but maybe your spouse is not a believer. 
Uh, I have a situation with a, another couple that's going through that right now. You have the world that is not believers. And you've got to face all that stuff. But you don't have to face it alone. You don't have to face it alone. So how do we do this? How do we do this? It's really very, very simple. You simply give God some more time. Oh, I don't have any time now. I, I'm so busy. Maybe you're too busy to be a Christian. Maybe you're too busy to be saved. Maybe you're too busy to go to heaven. I don't know. You're never too busy. You will make time for what you want to make time for. You will make time for it. Instead of turning on that tube, you know, we do a lot. Of, we watch a lot of ministries and we'll, we'll turn. Uh, matter of fact, I usually let them run all night long sometimes because I, th I think maybe not. But I think that my subconscious is getting fed. My spirit is getting fed while I sleep. I mean, I truly feel that. And I like having, she doesn't like it because she keeps her awake, but I can sleep through, a, I've slept through bombs. Okay, so, it, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I sleep good usually. But I think, I feel in my heart, I truly do, whether it is not, I don't know, but I truly feel in my heart that my subconscious is getting fed. My spirit is getting fed whenever I let uh, ministries run all night long. And then I wake up in the middle of the night and I think, oh, just let me stay up for a little while and watch this. And next thing I know, I'm asleep again. But I cannot get enough of, of Christ. I cannot get fed enough. I desire to know as much as I can possibly know. So what do I do? How do I do it? I spend time. I spend time with it. When I get in my truck... If I'm going to work, if I'm going to Dallas for something, if I'm going to see my daughters, if I'm going wherever, wherever, this book, I take it and I put it in my truck and it goes wherever I go. And if I'm sitting there waiting for Terry to come out of the store for an hour and a half, <laughs> then I open up my book and I start reading. Okay, I start studying, I start looking things up. I spend time. I take the opportunity. I go into a restaurant. I'm sitting there eating by myself. I take my book. I open my book. I spend time. You have to spend time. You've got to give Jesus a chance. And if you don't spend time, you're not giving him a chance. How about giving him this next year? How about let's making a commitment? You make the commitment. I've already made it. You make the commitment. You make the uh, resolution. Be in that 8% that you're going to give Jesus more time. More time. It will change your life. It will change your life. Now, you don't give him much time. Guess what? Stay right where you're at. Be conformed to the ways of the world. Or you can be formed, conformed to Christ. By the transforming of your mind. That means getting into the word and learning who Jesus is. Getting the knowledge. Getting the wisdom. Knowing who Jesus is. I ask you for your sake, not mine, to make that commitment this year. Most likely, if you do a resolution, I'm going to lose 30 pounds. I've been saying that for the last year. All right. I don't think I think I've gained maybe, you know, a few more. But and I'm just using that as a scenario. Most likely, if you make a New Year's resolution, 92 percent will not keep those resolutions. So guess what? Be in that 8 percent. But I'm asking you for your sake, let in that 8 percent, whatever else you do in that 8 percent, let Christ be in there somewhere. Let Jesus be in there somewhere. Spend some time with the Savior. Save your he will save your soul. And he'll sure make your life a whole lot easier. I mean a whole lot easier. Don't leave Jesus at home. When you go somewhere, take the book. 
Look for an opportunity when you're eating in a restaurant, when you're waiting on your wife, whenever you're at the doctor's office, whatever, whatever, whatever. If you've got a few minutes, instead of Facebooking, how about getting on the book? Getting on the book. Just open it up. Read a chapter. Read a verse. Something. Spend some time with Christ. You care at the church. But do you carry it anywhere else? I think most people in our church realize that we're going to teach out of the scriptures and, and I ask you to open your Bible. And we don't even say it anymore because I think everybody, does anybody in here not have a Bible? Does anybody need one? I will go today and get you one if you need one. Okay? You need to keep this book with you because this book is Jesus. This book is Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is the Word, and you need to spend time with Jesus. If you want to do that, take the book along with you. But carry Him outside of the church, not just inside of the church. The only way to re renew your mind is to dedicate some time to Christ. We do the Bible studies, like I said, on Tuesdays, on Sundays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. We record our Wednesday night Bible studies now, so it's on YouTube. We record our Sunday service. It's on YouTube. We have RCC TV, which is going real good, which is a Bible study. I'm doing the book of Romans. It's doing well. There's no excuse. If you don't like my teaching, fine, that's okay. There's other ministers out there, but make sure they're teaching the Word. Make sure they're not teaching some other doctrine. Make sure they're teaching out of the God's Word. Because if they're not teaching out of God's Word, then you're getting a false doctrine. You're getting a false doctrine. You're not getting Jesus. You're getting some man's version of it, if you will. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is the Word. Coming this year, I ask you to spend time with Him and renew your mind, renew your soul, renew your spirit. Then you will be able to approve what God's will is. His good, His pleasing, and His perfect will. His good, His pleasing, and His perfect will. Spend time with Jesus. And the only way to do that is to open that book, pray, and talk to Him. I can always count on Him being there. He never leaves me, never forsakes me. I can be in the middle of the, of the biggest turmoil, the biggest tornado going on in my life, and I call on Jesus and He's there. I feel Him there. I, I know He's there. He answers my call every time. Why? Because He wants to spend time with me. And He wants to spend time with you. But do you want to spend time with Him? That's the whole key, folks. Do you have a couple of minutes for your Savior? I hope you do. I hope this next year you'll make a change in your life to where you spend more time with your Savior because He's here to save you. And if you don't know Him as a Savior, then I'm going to ask you right now to call on His name and He says, all those who call on my name shall be saved. Shall be saved. Not might, not will, not clean up first, but shall be saved. But you have to call on His name. And you have to mean it in your heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, that we can come into Your house and worship and praise You. Lord, I make a commitment this year, and I spend a lot of time with You, but it's never enough. I make a commitment. I make a promise to You. I make a resolution to You, a promise to You, and a promise to me that I'm going to spend more time with You this year. I need to spend more time with You, Lord. Because I need to know you. I need to know you more and more and more. So if that's you today and you don't know Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, I ask you to call on his name. He made it very, very simple. But you must mean it in your heart. Just simply and humbly say, 
Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus, come into my life. I make you my Lord and my Savior. I ask you to spend time with me. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen, amen. It's just that simple, folks. If you need prayer for anything whatsoever, if you need prayer for anything whatsoever, let us pray with you. We're just people just like you. Let's all stand. So if you can't come up here, we'll come to you. Just let us know. and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling you. Calling for you and for me. Amen, amen. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching. Watching. For you and for me. Amen, amen. Come home. Hey, Papa. Come home. He who are weary, come home. Earnestly. Brothers, thank you. Yeah, if you happen to need prayer and you didn't feel as though you needed to come up front, and you want, if you want to meet me afterwards, I'll be happy to pray with you. I'd be happy to talk with you. Amen. All right, guys, let's don't open the door until we're done. Wait till we're done, please. Into Jesus for the cleansing fire. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? 
Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin And be washed in the blood of the Lamb There's a fountain flowing from the soul unclean Go be washed in the blood of the Lamb Are you washed in the blood In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Some glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore blessed new year. We'll see you uh, Monday night. Hopefully, if not, we'll see you next year. God bless you.